Regarding salvation, I know that you have a, a different view of it compared to other Christian faiths. Could you explain that a little bit? Well, for us, uh, salvation is the healing of the human person. Because of the fall of man, human nature has been damaged. Human nature has been tainted. And Jesus came to renew our human nature and heal us. He assumed all of human nature so that all of human nature could be healed. And so it's the restoration and healing of the human person. That is what salvation is. It's not just about getting to go to a better place when you die. We don't deny that's the truth, but that's only a part of it. Salvation is you are saved, you are healed, not just getting to go to a better place. Well, that's a really interesting thought. I never thought about that in the, to the extent that you just shared that, because usually for Christians, they think of salvation as like another future date, that they're, they're hoping and, and praying once they receive Jesus, it's going to be a great and glorious day in the future. That's all, all so, that's true, but that's, not, that's only a piece of the pie. A piece of it. So th there are a lot of people who are actually, yeah, hurting, even though that they're Christians. And they're in pain, even though they believe in Jesus. So you go through this understanding that this is the healing it's salvation in your, in your faith. How do you do that? What kind the, of things the, do you do to, to help them out? The church is the hospital for souls. Jesus says, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And he says, those who are well don't need a physician, but those who are sick need a physician. So mm -hmm. the church is where we come to be healed. You know, like I said, when we go to confession, it's like going to the doctor. You tell them what's, what's ailing you so that you can be healed. It, the, the Eucharist is called, um, St. Irenaeus, I believe, called the Eucharist the medicine of immortality. So it's me holy medicine that we take mm. that we may be healed and restored to eternal life and well-being and health. So it's, it's therapeutic. Um, there's a prayer that we say in the, in, in the beginning of our morning evening prayers. It says, All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. So if you look at that prayer, it covers the aspects of salvation. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. So you have the pardoning, you have the forgiving, you have the cleansing, but you also have the healing. Mm. Jesus loves us, he wants us healed. And that's mm. why he created his church. Healed on earth, within our spirit, that and also being change that's becoming a new creature then yeah. in a lot of ways right it's a it's a regeneration a new birth mm. uh it's a new life mm. old has passed away new has come mm. so it's a glorious thing and we're and it's a process we do have baggage we do have problems mm. but here this is where we come to be unburdened to mm. have those sins washed away and to be healed there's an example that's often given like if you tell your son Say you have a, a five-year-old son and he wants to play football with the big guys. You might, and it's rain, rain is falling, they're in a muddy field, and you tell them, son, you're too small, you can't play with those big guys, you're going to get hurt. And he decides he wants to play anyway, and they let him play the game with them. And what do you know? He comes home crying with a broken arm. Yeah. What's the father going to do? He's going to forgive him for disobeying his order. He's going to cleanse him, he's going to wash off the mud, and he's going to brace that arm so that he can be healed. Yeah. So, so he forgives, he cleanses, and he heals. So if all he did was forgive and cleanse, the boy still has a broken arm. Hmm. It's incomplete. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That makes sense? That's, that's neat. I like that idea. And we also call it theosis because our human nature is healed by partaking of the divine nature because we were made in the image and after the likeness of God. The image we kept in the fall, but we lost the likeness. Now we're trying to get that likeness back through partaking of God's grace, which we call the divine energies. The divine? Energies. Energies? Yes, because when you receive grace, you're not receiving something created. You're receiving something uncreated. You are partaking of God himself, and he is healing you. So the energies, the powers are coming in and, and healing you consistently? Yeah. So you know, Peter says, you know, we are partakers of the divine nature. 
you cannot say the divine nature is created. It's uncreated. It comes from God, hmm. and it's healing to us. 